Hollywell thriving industries have long since disappeared, but one phenomenon remains constant. That is the Holy Well of St. Winifred. Although there are many holy wells to be seen in Wales, there is only St. Winifred's that is recorded as one of the seven wonders of Wales. The fame of St. Winifred's well and its ability to heal the sick and suffering for many centuries places it in that special group of landmarks. Records indicate that St. Winifred's well has been a place of pilgrimage since the 7th century. The well is situated on the roadside leading down from the centre of town and surrounded by the well chapel, with the parish church of St. James on the hillside above. Legend has it that Winifred was the daughter of a local prince and St. Bueno, a Celtic saint, was her uncle. Bueno had been asked by Winifred's parents to guide their daughter towards a life of meditation and prayer. One day, Craddock, chieftain from nearby Hawarden, attempted to seduce Winifred and the young girl fled to safety to the nearby church built by her uncle. Unfortunately, she was unable to escape and when Craddock caught up with her, he cut off her head. A spring of water then gushed out of the hillside where her head had fallen to the ground. Saint Bueno came out of his church and taking up her head, placed it back on her body. Then he prayed and Winifred was brought back to life. Craddock sank into the ground and was never seen again. By the Middle Ages, the legend of Saint Winifred and the healing powers of the well had spread far and wide as pilgrims, both rich and poor, made their way to Hollywell. Even kings were visiting this holy place. Henry V prayed to Saint Winifred before he went into battle at Agincourt and made a pilgrimage of thanksgiving to Hollywell from Saint Winifred's shrine in Shrewsbury. The chapel around the well was built at the end of the 15th century. The arches that are rising gracefully over the well are accounted as one of Wales's finest examples of perpendicular Gothic architecture. The fan vaultings over the well are quite splendid and where they meet a carved pendant projection depicts six scenes from the life of Saint Winifred. The chapel has many decorative carvings, several of the emblems of the benefactors of the chapel. Other carvings are of real and mythical creatures, all displaying the skill and in some examples the humour of medieval craftsmen. The well and the chapel were the focal point for the gathering of pilgrims from far and wide. The amount of water coming from the well was originally much greater than it is now. In 1917, however, Hollywell was devastated when a mining operation at nearby Halkin cut through the underground stream which flowed into the well, causing it to be diverted. Much to the despair of the town and to pilgrims, the well went completely dry. Eventually, to the wonderment of many, another spring of water erupted naturally a short distance away from the original source. This was diverted and the waters flowed once again into the well. Thanks to the Sisters of Charity that settled in Hollywell in 1859, by the turn of the 20th century, Hollywell was bustling once more during the summer months, crowded with pilgrims from all parts of Britain. The Well Garden was established in 1930 and the site of old St. Winifred's Mill and Brewery. On the day of St. Winifred's Feast, the 3rd of November, 
the well chapel and garden is usually full to overflowing with the outdoor mass. The pilgrimage to the well never really died out, even during the difficult times, and it is the only shrine in Britain able to make this claim. <laughs>